In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace and love of God our Father and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, to prepare our hearts to enter into the sacred mysteries, let us together call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, we pray, may be so conformed to the Paschal observances that the bodily discipline now solemnly begun may bear fruit in the souls of all. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, If the wicked man turns away from all the sins he committed, if he keeps all my statutes and does what is right and just, he shall surely live, he shall not die. None of the crimes he committed shall be remembered against him. He shall live because of the virtue he has practiced. Do I indeed derive any pleasure from the death of the wicked, says the Lord God? Do I rather rejoice when he turns from his evil way that he may live? And if the virtuous man turns from the path of virtue to do evil, the same kind of abominable things that the wicked man does, can he do this and still live? None of his virtuous deeds shall be remembered because he has broken faith and committed sin. Because of this, he shall die. You say the Lord's way is not fair. Hear now, house of Israel. Is it my way that is unfair, or rather, are not your ways unfair? When someone virtuous turns away from virtue to commit iniquity and dies, it is because of the iniquity he committed that he must die. But if the wicked turning from the wickedness he has committed does what is right and just, he shall preserve his life. Since he has turned away from all the sins that he committed, he shall surely live, he shall not die. The word of the Lord. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my voice in supplication. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, Lord, who can stand? But with you is forgiveness, that you may be revered. I trust in the Lord, my soul trusts in his word. My soul waits for the Lord, more than the sentinels wait for the dawn. Let Israel wait for the Lord. For with the Lord is kindness, and with him is plenteous redemption. And he will redeem Israel from all their iniquities. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to your ancestors, you shall not kill, and whoever kills will be liable to judgment. But I say to you, whoever is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment, and whoever says to his brother, Rach, will be answerable to the Sanhedrin, and whoever says, you fool, will be liable to fiery Gehenna. 
Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and there recall that your brother has anything against you, leave your gift here at the altar. Go first and be reconciled with your brother and then come and offer your gift. Settle with your opponent quickly while on the way to court. Otherwise, your opponent will hand you over to the judge and the judge will hand you over to the guard and you will be thrown into prison. Amen, I say to you, you will not be released until you have paid the last penny. The Gospel of the Lord. Ezekiel speaks for the Lord, saying that the virtuous person shall live, whereas those who commit evil will die. God rejoices when the wicked turn from their evil ways. Jesus teaches the crowd in this morning's gospel that whoever is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Jesus tells his followers to be reconciled to one another. The prophet Ezekiel, my dear brothers and sisters, says that the crimes of our past will not be remembered by God if we keep his statutes and do what is right and just. And that is something that you and me are called to do each and every single day. We are called to be contrite. We are called to be humble. We are called to acknowledge our faults, and we are called to trust God with all our heart, soul, and strength. And not only that, we are to called to continue to do each and every single day things that are right and just. Go back to the line that I shared with you that stood out from the movie Jesus Revolution that I saw last Sunday when the pastor's wife said to the pastor, do not be arrogant to think that God cannot work through your weakness. So true. Sometimes we fail, but the important thing is to acknowledge our failures and to keep getting back up each and every single day and plowing ahead. You know, the scribes and the Pharisees, the difference is they taught, but many times they did not recognize their own faults. Their pride, their position, their stature in society is what got in the way. They did not necessarily practice what they preach. Now, Of course, we can all say that about ourselves. Sometimes we don't practice what we preach. But the key is, are we following the Lord's commands and his statutes, being contrite and humble and approaching him each and every single day? I trust in the Lord. My soul trusts in his word. Do we trust God enough to surrender to him? And that's what we reflect upon during this Lenten season. You know, we often can say, my dear brothers and sisters, you know, the, even though if you were to ask liturgists, you can debate a, the exact placement of the sign of peace in the liturgy, but the sign of peace does have its importance. And it's rooted in the gospel that we hear today from Matthew. You know, Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and there recall that your brother has anything against you, leave your gift at the altar, go first and be reconciled to your, with your brother, and then come and offer your gift. You know, the sign of peace, the symbolism there is to, we leave our gift at the altar and we make peace with our brothers and sisters. Now, necessarily, we may not have a beef with the person sitting next to us or behind us or in front of us. But the symbolism is important and the gesture is important because it's recognizing, again, another penitential act and it's an opportunity to make peace with those who have offended us in some way. And so that gesture of the sign of peace, 
does have a meaning to it. And, and it's a very simple rite. It's not meant to be extended. It's not to be drawn out. It's the simple gesture of making peace with the person right next to us. Although I think we sometimes need to do a little catechesis on the sign of peace because it becomes, and this is why the liturgists talk about the placement of it, because sometimes it can easily become more social hour. Hey, buddy, how are you? Peace be with you. And you're extending that to the other side of the room. The person right next to you. And that symbolism is still there. So the sign of peace, again, takes us into the scripture readings that we hear today. Making peace with our brother. But also, my dear brothers and sisters, when we are contrite and humble and when we do take advantage of the opportunity that God gives us through the sacrament of reconciliation, even though we confess our sins in private before God, it does restore us to the community. It restores us to the community. It restores us with our brothers and sisters. It restores us, more importantly, to God. And so that sacrament cannot be underestimated. The sacrament is full of grace that God provides us with the forgiveness of sins and also the challenge not to sin again, but also the encouragement. We find encouragement in that sacrament. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, let us reflect on the readings today. Jesus tells his followers to be reconciled to one another. May we strive to be reconciled to God and one another each and every single day. Let us turn to him, to our Heavenly Father, with our petitions, knowing that he hears our prayers. For church leaders, may God provide wisdom and love to guide their actions and decisions. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For elected officials, may the Holy Spirit help them in creating a more just and peaceful world. We pray. For those who suffer in war-stricken lands, may Jesus sustain them and grant them hope, we pray. For the members of this faith community, may God's love be our guide as we work to build his kingdom on earth, we pray. As we pray on this the memorial of St. Catherine Drexel, let us remember all those who work in education, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, may they soon enter the kingdom of God, we pray. And for the intention of the holy sacrifice of the mass being offered this morning for Doris Klauscher, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, hear and answer these prayers we ask in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Wash away, O Lord, my iniquities and cleanse me from my many sins. Thank you. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept the sacrificial offerings, O Lord, by which in your power and kindness you willed us to be reconciled to yourself and our salvation to be restored through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Giving thanks, you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse of the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. But look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Thank you. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Body of Christ. Amen. Body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. body of Christ Amen. the body of Christ Amen. the body of Christ 
the body of Christ. 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 Amen. The body of Christ. 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 Let us pray. May the holy refreshment of your sacrament restore us anew, O Lord, and cleansing us of old ways. Take us up into the mystery of salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Look with favor on your people, O Lord, that what their observance outwardly declares, it may inwardly bring about through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do that, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen.